You know what I mean? That's what really inspired me. It was good. Man. I just like to sing in. Uh, obviously, if, if I do a tune it gets big, then so be it. But I love, you know, I love, I love all my tunes. And obviously, the big ones, all in good. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know if they're gonna go big. If the crowd takes to them and it goes big, then stuff. Like, well, this is life. It goes big. Love it. As for the artists, I just go with them and I take my vibe. I don't take their vibe. I just take my vibe and they, en they enhance my vibe with whatever they're doing and how they see their vision. And at the end of the day, we just get something that's nice, and it, you know, nine times out of ten, it comes out really well. It's a different kind of flavour for everybody. On your mouth, get set, you ready. <laughs> Obviously, it takes some ability, and it takes uh, a certain listening skill to listen and to enter, to put your input in there. You know, some people do it well and some people don't do it well. You now, MC's got to have sense, you know, understand it's not about you. There's a DJ playing the music. If you weren't there, the DJ can still play and entertain the night. So, to be there as part of the whole journey, you know what I mean? Then try to take control when you ain't got no control. You get me? You got me, DJ Hype, drum and bass, up front, isms, schisms. Yeah, me? Yeah, I've been going for about 20 years, and I think after doing this for 20 years and still being at the so-called top end of it, you know, if I had to be asked why am I successful at it or why why are you so good at it, I don't know. I mean, I started out when there was one deck. You know, there was no such thing. Well, I don't know if there was no such thing, but I didn't know about decks and mixing. I knew about sound system and speakers from probably the age of about 12, and I'm 37. It's something that I've grown and not got into, I don't think. You know, like I got into jungle or I got into this. I just think I've been part of the, um, What's the word? The evolution of it all. And I think my success is down to um, hard work, um, feet on the ground. As much as people tell me how good and, you know, you're amazing, I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'm real in what I do. You know, I'm not, I'm not like, well, he's only big because, you know, blah, blah, open this door. Nobody's opened doors for me. You know, everything I've done has been a hard slog to get to. And once I've got there, Probably because it didn't happen overnight for me, successful-wise. You know, like I've been, I've been doing it for 20 years. I didn't just like, I want to be a DJ and bang, I was there. You know, it's been a very hard climb. And once I got there, I suppose I got there at a time where I knew how to appreciate it. 
I suppose the key to success is being consistent, being real. You know, with labels, I think my success with the labels is one, I, have a, I must have a good ear for music, otherwise I wouldn't be doing all these things. So I suppose that's something you just have. I don't think I learned that. If you've got the history I've got, then in theory you should be a good A&R man, within reason. And I don't think I'm the be all and end all. I mean, I make mistakes. There's tunes that I don't like that end up being big, and there's tunes that, you know, that I am spot before anyone else. Nobody's perfect. I'm very honest with everybody around me, you know, like as a label, you know, I treat my artists very fairly. Because my early career, I was the artist and I was signed to different people that all give it the big talk and this time next year, this and that, and I go and work with them and they just don't do nothing. It's just bollocks, you know what I mean? It's just, so I always thought that if I take artists on, you know, ripping them off financially or, you know, just not helping them, what's that gonna do? They're just gonna go. You know, if this year I wanna do an album and I'm gonna knock everybody, maybe that's a good idea. But if you're like me, when you want to stay in it for the long run, you know, honesty is the best policy. And radio success, I suppose, is because I think I'm a good personality for radio. I think when you see me out in a club, it doesn't, a lot of people don't believe that I mean, they do now after years, but so many people are like, was that you on the radio? That didn't sound like you. You're usually a miserable git. And I'm like, well, because you see me in a nightclub at three in the morning when I've probably been somewhere else, driven four hours to get there. You know, I'm not, I'm not Mr. Cheesy Grin, you know, but I suppose, yeah, the main key to success for me is obviously some form of talent. I must be all right at what I do and just being real with it all. When we started out, me, Daddy Earl, Shut Up and Dance, you know, like we were about 12, 13, and, and I think we we're our worst critics. We'd all slag each other, like, that was shit, that was great, you know, we're, but we're very real with it. I mean, I, when I used to enter mixed competitions, I remember winning one and coming out, and my friends just slagged me off. <laughs> because, yeah, you won, but that, you weren't, you didn't do that good. It was just they were shit, you know? And, uh, I didn't like that, but you need it. My first experiences with DJing started, like, as I said, I started off on a sound system. When we originally started back then, nobody had two deck, there was no such thing as two deck mixing, and I don't think there was anyway. And um, basically, we used to have, it was all about how many bass, you know, how much bass you can blast out your speakers, how powerful your amps are, and people chatting. I mean, back then, you used to call the MCs, used to be called the DJs. You know, like, if you were someone who MCed on a mic, you were called a reggae DJ. So, you know, Daddy Earl, Smiley and PJ, they used to DJ. And I used to basically mix down one deck. We used to have a tower of amps and um, little sound effects. I used to, act to actually stand on a chair because I wasn't tall enough to reach the deck. You know, like the deck was stacked. And that was the thing. If you look at early sound, I don't know what it's like now so much, but back in the early 80s, you know, it would be like an amp case that was just as go on as high as you could get it. That was like your prestige and all your speakers. And I basically used to just simply volume off on, bank, bank, jank, jank, like reggae mix downs they used to be called. And I used to EQ the sound system. And that was my first kind of role, you know, touching a deck and using it. And then, um, I'm not sure, I think it was about 1982 or 81, the whole, um, you know, like hip hop, it wasn't known as hip hop then, and it was just creeping in, you know, like through the pop era. I mean, Buffalo Girls, um, Planet Rock, Africa Bambara and Planet Rock basically come along. And um, the whole, the sort of influence of Africa Bambara and that, that whole Zulu Nation thing, which they were promoting over here at the time, probably just, you know, to showcase this style of music from America. And um, I remember watching a TV program and they were talking about scratching and the guy's like, yeah, anyone can do it. All you've got to do is like get your deck. And if you've got a deck in your living room, go and have a look or try your mum. And in them days, I used to have one of these stacks. I lived at home with my mum. And I had a stack like this in the bedroom with a one amp and a deck. 
And I went in there and just put on a record and was just like flicking it basically and realizing, look, oh, I can do it, I can scratch, look. And I was like, and then I remember Shane Smiley and he was like, yo, you're really, like, I was probably shit at it. But to him, it was like, that's fucking brilliant. He's like, if you did that properly, you could put that on the sound and da da da. da. So I started just practicing alone. You know, like nobody teaching me, just flicking the record basically. And um, that was my introduction into kind of using a deck. And then it developed, obviously we needed a second deck. And them days I didn't have no, didn't have pitch control. So I had two decks in the end that were belt drive, no vary speed. So I learned to scratch before I could actually mix. I had a mixer that didn't have a crossfade or a headphone socket, just had these up fades. So I just used to do these weird mixtapes, you know. Our heyday probably was about 17, when we actually got it together properly. And we'd do blueses all around Hackney. I'd kick off a house and basically five floors, of the, you know, like five rooms in a house, put all this in, do our own flyers. And in a night, you'd hear reggae, you know, you'd hear reggae being cut up with like Daddy L chatting over it. You'd hear your run of the mill hip hop, LL Cool J, you know, um, Run DMC. You'd hear Rare Groove. You'd get Smiley and PJ um, rapping and I'd cut up breaks for them. And at that time, it was weird because I don't think the audience was necessarily ready for it. You know, like, we had it all. We really believed we had it all as well. We were young and we were so, you know, when you're young, you're really inspirational and fired up. And, and a lot of people that I know, big names that have gone on to become big in like, whether they're an R&B or hip hop DJ or producer, that hated the music back then. Oh, it's samples, it's not real, it's not this, you know. So that, my whole two deck thing come from there. I never like to talk about the future too far ahead because I, I don't, I never have. If you read any interview, anything about me, they go, where do you see it all going? And I'm like, I don't predict the future. I just evolve. Um, I, I, mean, I suppose the natural progression on label wise is more album projects, um, you know, and hopefully getting each artist, whether it be Potential Bad Boy, Hazard or um, G-Dub to work towards doing albums. For myself personally, obviously the DJing, you know, and going around the world and spreading the love, as they say, and hopefully maybe after this dub plate killers, probably try and get another mix CD out. I mean, I usually have about one a year, one or two a year, if I'm lucky, but who knows? The, play the Players Nights is ongoing at Fabric. You know, everything's healthy and tidy. I think I'm gonna be on a few more festivals for 2006 as a DJ, but that's about it, I mean, I've been doing this so long now that I just like sustaining where I'm at. I enjoy doing radio, I enjoy playing in clubs, I enjoy owning labels and sharing what I've learned over the years with artists and hoping that what I know can help them come forward. And that's it, man, and being loved by you all, darling. Some of the killer is a dog, 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 dog